Hi, this is Eric Lyons, and this is a video demonstration of Koji's new genome visualization system known as Epic Koji. What Epic Koji brings us is much greater support and control over layers that you can overlay on top of a genome um, with a lot of really good support for quantitative genomic measurements, such as those that you would get from epigenetics um, or epigenomics exper uh, experiments, as well as transcriptomics and, and other types of experiments that get you measurements across an entire genome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our Koji test user account, um, take a look at his profile. This is all the data that's associated with this account, and I'm going to take a look at our experiments. So here's all the experiments with this user. The ones with R's are denoted as private data. These have been restricted to this user or shared with this user, and the ones without it are public data sets. Down here is one that I previously loaded on an Argonaut 4 mutant of Arabidopsis, and this came out of a, a paper, the Jacobson lab. And up here on the top, there's other Argonaut mutants um, from that same lab. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this experiment, get us over to experiment view, um, follow that over to organism view, which allows me now to launch our genome browser. So the original genome browser in Koji was based off of open layers, which is software that's commonly used in GIS or geospatial information systems that allow you to manage and, and interact with maps. And what we figured is a genome is a two-dimensional map. You want to scroll left and right. You want to be able to, to zoom in um, and zoom out. We can zoom way in, get some eye candy in terms of individual nucleotides. And we also have our controls for various layers that we can overlay um, quantitative data. Um, that zoomed in a little too far, so I'm going to back that one out a little bit. Um, but you can see that the system um, you know, works pretty well, but it does definitely have some limitations. So what we decided to do for our new browser uh, framework was use JBrowse, which has really greatly expanded support for a whole bunch of different kinds of genomic data. And so here's JBrowse. What we've done is added in some custom visualizations where we've codified the gene models, which are here on this track. I can click on them, get their, their annotations just as I could in the original browser. Um, this would pop up in little pop-ups. Um, and and uh, what we have now is the ability to easily um, visualize these quantitative uh, experiments. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can see some more of these. I zoomed out too far so we can't see our gene models anymore. Our gene models are back. And I can just click on these in order to add in um, various tracks for these quantitative data. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Now, uh, we also have our, our still some of the custom tracks of Koji. I'm going to turn off these ones and take a look at our GC content track. So this is, again, using the same visualization system as what we had before in the old browser. Um, but what's, what's really nice about this system is we've linked this into Koji Notebook so that we can group together multiple experiments and visualize them all at once. So here's a collection of Argo, uh, Argonaut mutants. Um, I've got six experiments here. When I select that, notice that they all come up in one track. And so here's all of those uh, experiments being visualized at the same time. If I want to take a look at one individually, I can just highlight that and it will show up as a track right below it. And Based on just using the JBrowse framework, we have the ability to easily move and manipulate, um, zoom in, and take a look at these regions in, in more detail um, as we choose. What's also nice by being able to use these notebooks um, is we can also now do transformations on these data. So for example, if I select this button to show average, what it will do is take all of those experimental values and average them together so I can take a look at the aggregate behavior of all of these genes uh, at once. And so this is turning out to be a very nice framework. Um, if you want to um, add and manipulate notebooks inside of Koji, all you need to do is go to your profile. Um, you can take a look at your notebooks. Here's that Arabidopsis one. You have the opportunity to create new things, like add a new notebook. I'm just going to go into this one that I created before, and I'm going to add to it maybe some more experiments. So over here, I'm going to do a search for um, Argonaut um, experiments, and I'm going to go ahead now and add in um, that one right there, which now shows up. 
that when I do go back to this browser, I do have to um, reload it. But when it reloads, that notebook will have that additional experiment in there, which I can now visualize all at once. This is still uh, in, in our prototype system. We're working on making these interactions a lot better. Um, but we did want to give people an early look um, in terms of how this system works. And we really appreciate all of your feedback. Um, feel free to contact us. Um, just log into Koji, go to help. Um, Take a look at this page right here, contact or cite us, and let us know what's working for you and what's not. Um, thank you very much, and I do want to add a, a set of thanks specifically to the head developer of this project, which is Matt Baumhoff over at the University of Arizona. Um, we have a collaborator group over at UPenn with Brian Gregory, and we have incredible support from the Arabidopsis epigenetic community known as EPIC, and this entire project is funded and supported by the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. Thank you very much.